Hi and welcome to this video blog with me Wayne of SwimmingCyclingRunning.com This is the first blog in 2013 so I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and wonderful new year and let's hope that continues throughout 2013. This blog is going to be slightly different to normal and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to review a pair of SPD sandals that my wife bought me um, for Christmas. These were bought from Wiggle, a great online retailer for either cycling or triathlon. And these particular sandals are bought to replace ones I had out in South Cape Verde. And I love cycling in sandals if it's in warm weather. It's just really nice, especially if they're SPDs and they can fit in. And the reason I choose SPDs uh, for hot weather cycling is because they're flush uh, with the bottom. And even when we get the cleat in here, it'll still be flush with the bottom or just below. So that instead of walking on a, a cleat which makes you walk like this and it's quite dangerous you actually walk flat-footed um, and can roll that along and you don't have to actually uh, take these off when you want to walk around um, so cycling in these in either hot weather or certainly when you're abroad is really nice so what we're going to do is we're going to actually show you how to fit in the cleat which wiggle by the way um, did not suggest that my wife buy with the shoe and i think that's a mistake i think for a start, my wife would have bought the cleat if she'd known that one was necessary, so I had to go out and buy these. Um, and that's, you know, they're 17 pounds, which is reasonably expensive. I think you could probably, as a package, done that um, slightly cheaper. So you might have said, oh, spud cleat, SPD cleat, you can get, well, when you're buying these for, let's say, 15 or, or 12 pounds, um, given a bit of a discount. So that, I think, is somewhere where your well, website can be slightly improved. But we'll show you how to fit in the cleat for a first time uh, and where it should go. So we'll show you that. And then we'll go out onto the uh, onto a turbo trainer where I have a bike with SPD pedals um, that I use for commuting. And we'll see how exactly how they work, uh, both in and out the saddle and how they feel. And that'll be hopefully, hopefully interesting for you. But as I say, in summer, there's nothing nicer than uh, cycling in a proper cleated sandal. Uh, for freedom of your feet. It's just, just really quite nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is show you how to fit a cleat properly and we'll have to do that in close-up. Okay, so here we have the right foot and you'll see that we have the inset for the cleat that's screwed in at the current time. And we just have to screw that out with a Phillips screwdriver. that's easy enough and underneath you can see that there are two plates or a plate in there with two holes and that's so you can maneuver the holes backwards and forwards to get the actual cleat when you put it in in the right place now the right positioning for the cleat would generally be underneath the ball of the foot which is going to be about there on me now you can check that by obviously putting your foot in um, but what we'll do now is we'll, we'll put it on and then we'll check afterwards. Now there are four parts to any cleat um, and that is the cleat itself where you're positioning it um, with the large element at the back and the small element at the front. Uh, there's a gasket or uh, holder for the next thing which are the screws and the screws you've got two of them um, and they fix on using an Allen key fitment. I'm just trying to make sure I don't cross thread this. One thing you don't want to do with anything that screws in is actually cross thread it. So I've just got that lightly screwed in. I'm going to screw in just the other one very lightly to make sure that there's no cross threading. Right, so at the moment that is slightly screwed in and I've done it so that I absolutely know um, that when I tighten it up the thread's going to remain pretty good. Now I want it under the ball of the foot. If I look sideways that's about under the ball of the foot for me. Um, I would think slightly back, roughly in line with that there. And I, I do tend to have it fairly well in the middle of the shoe. So I'm just going to hold that in place, get my Allen key, tighten one side up so it's slightly tight 
than the other. You do this in unison, otherwise you're going to end up with something slightly odd. So I'm going to check that it's straight front to back. And it is. So just tighten one up, one, the other up. And each time you tighten one up, you need to tighten the other up again. So you don't want to do one completely. There we go. It's got to be reasonably tight because you obviously don't want this to come loose whilst you're, you're cycling. Because um, that makes it awkward to get it out. There we go. It's slowly but surely tightening nicely. There we go. And I think that is probably sufficient uh, tightness for that particular cleat. You can see it doesn't move at all. And you can also see, hopefully, that it is under the level of the actual foot so that when you walk on it you're actually walking take that away you're actually walking on the sole of this you're not walking on the cleat itself which is why it's so nice uh, to use in the summer okay so now we've actually got the cleats on uh, it's time to see how they fit so let's just uh, open the top it's got a hook at the back which is quite useful for pulling them off um, and then just tighten them up and I must say that feels incredibly comfortable and you can see that in the summer just having your feet like that instead of in uh, cycle shoes is actually quite nice even uh, for a triathlon I think that'd be quite nice other foot let's get that in put it up at the back tighten it and again that's really nice and you can see that the sole being slightly curved means that as you walk forward the actual sole curves so it can be a fairly stiff sole and you still get to walk quite naturally on them um, as you go along. So that will be interesting in the summer as we, uh, as we actually do more walking in them to see how exactly they go. But initially they actually feel incredibly comfortable um, and it will be interesting to see how they are actually uh, reacting on the bike or how they work on the bike. Okay, you normally see me in my inner sanctum, and now we're in what you might call my outer sanctum. This is the, the garage that we've converted really into an exercise studio. Running machine, we've got a weights machine, space to do weights. Uh, I've got a spin bike behind me, and uh, this is just one on a turbo, um, and there's lots of other room for other things. But we're here to test the SPDs. Just it's not quite in. Three. In. Okay. It's ordinary pedaling. Seems very comfortable. I should probably have taken a little uh, tag off before I got on. It's not making a huge difference. It's certainly not being caught in the chain. And let's just uh, up the cadence a bit. No problem there. Um, let's go to the outer room and take it up to just now to the saddle work. How are they doing? I'm absolutely fine. The thing about them is, in or out the saddle, my feet aren't moving from their position. They've got ridges to the toes. And that's holding my foot within the actual confines of here and they're not moving around at all. So I think, all in all, taking it back to the inner ring again, up in the cadence. But these are a really nice pair of summer shoes for uh, cycling. Just check that there's no movement if I really move my foot around. No. My feet are staying absolutely solidly in the shoe and not moving, which has to be good. There's no flex on the sole whatsoever. And I think that these are going to be a joy to ride in the sun whenever we have the sun again. Now, as a triathlon coach, I'm always looking for an angle. And something struck me with these uh, particular shoes. They are road shoes in the traditional sense, in that the strap does up from the inside to the outside. But because the top is so supple um, and the, the shoe holds you so firmly, 
I did wonder if they could be used as an alternative uh, to a triathlon shoe for those people who don't want to change cleats from spuds um, or those people who don't want to buy loads of pairs of shoes and, and just do triathlon in the summer. So I was just going to test that theory now for you. So we put our foot, hand on the front, slip our foot in, grab the back, and pull it up, grab the strap and on. That's fairly quick. If we do the back end, foot in, back on, strap in, and on. And I'm rolling. So that's perfectly feasible to use these as a beginner's triathlon shoe, or even as a triathlon shoe. Remember, I haven't haven't actually cycled in these um, at all, um, let alone on a turbo or outside and tried to uh, fit them, but a bit of practice and holding the shoes in the right position, and I reckon that could be used as a potential triathlon shoe. See how easy that was to get out, and again for the other foot, up, back, I'm now on the pedals ready to dismount, and they're stable to come off because I'm, I'm away there. So, as I said, as a triathlon coach, I like to look at something slightly unusual. And that is a pretty good substitute for a triathlon shoe for someone who doesn't want to change their pedals or who actually is on a limited budget. Okay, so there you have it, a review of the Shimano SD66 sandal with SPD cleat on the bottom. And I must say, I'm incredibly impressed with these so far. The fact that it's got a rounded uh, sole and the sole is so solid means that it can be easily walked wherever you go. You can use it potentially as a triathlon shoe if you've got spud pedals. And I don't think there are many options for you in the spud market for a triathlon shoe. So that would be a cheap way to get into triathlon shoes. Um, and they actually work, you've seen that. All right, I'll see you shortly. Hopefully uh, we'll have a lovely 2013 together and we'll be triathloning the whole way through. Keep well.